Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, this morning's webinar. And we're actually starting on time. Yay, great. That's fantastic. We've actually sorted ourselves out from a, a technical point of view from with the audio, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Although David still can't hear me. It's a blessing in a blessing in disguise, I would have thought. Anyway, welcome and uh, to, as I said, to this morning's session. But as usual, before we start, may I draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screens. Please, please, please don't ever think of using uh, uh, money that you cannot afford to lose if you are thinking of trading in this market and in any market. Uh, and given what's going on at the moment, I would have thought that uh, piece of advice is even more appropriate. Um, if um, I know we have a whole uh, a mixture of people who, who come along to these sessions. I know we've got some of our um, uh, Forex program students here. We've got, uh, I know we've got users of just the, the quantum uh, trading indicators. I know that some people come along who've just bought the books and people who've come along have discovered us, uh, um, you know, through you, our YouTube videos, my Facebook pages, so, you know, for, in whatever category you fit in, you are all very, very welcome. Right, very quickly, uh, how we're going to uh, run this session, be myself and David, who is actually sitting behind me, and we look at the markets through the prism of volume price analysis. We look at what's going on in the fundamental, uh, on the fundamental landscape, the related markets, and of course, markets at the moment are being driven very much by uh, the medical crisis that is, uh, you know, the global medical crisis that is ongoing with coronavirus. Um, the, the methodology of volume price analysis is all explained in the books on Amazon. This is the digital uh, uh, box set for the methodology that explains it in more detail. And um, as well as the, um, the, the books, the methodology, uh, David and I have also developed a whole set of, of tools uh, to help support the methodology and in particular for Forex we have some very Forex specific tools but we'll explain those uh, as we go along. Very very quickly just with through for those of you who uh, aren't aware of the program this is where you will find details of the program at Quantum Trading Ed Education and the indicators just the indicators themselves is at quantumtrading.com. The program actually does include the full set of indicators so it's it's about 200 hours worth of, of videos there are pdf downloads there are five uh, core modules but it does include the full set of indicators and you can select uh, for which platform you would like to um, you know you, you would like to have it's mt45 ninja trader trading view and we are working on trade station at, at the moment i think david's got some trading view charts up uh, for this morning session i've got mt5 and ninja trader and as i said david has got ninja trader and um and trading view right with regard to a volume price analysis um it, there are there are five pillars to volume uh, price analysis and the uh, the inspiration uh, for it if you like how we uh, how david and i sort of came and, and developed this uh, uh, this methodology it really was inspired by the work of um, Richard Wyckoff, and, and I've mentioned this before in previous um, uh, webinars and sessions, and I really haven't kind of explained it in in any um, you know in any detail. I'm not going to go into a huge spiel about uh, the you know Wyckoffian theory, but it's really important that, that that you know at least you come away. Those of you who are not on the program come away with the three basic tenets of Wyckoff and there is based on these three laws and the three laws are the law of supply and demand cause and effect and effort and result and really the best way to see these laws is to see it on the chart and David and I are really going to make a, 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 an effort to show you you know when we refer to elements of VPA on the chart and actually refer them back to uh, these three laws because what they actually do is they frame the chart and they give us a narrative of what is happening on the what has been happening on the chart what is happening now on the chart but much more importantly what is likely to be happening next now those of you who are on the program will know <clears throat> excuse me uh, the technical analysis module goes into uh, Wyckoff um, uh, pr trends, primary trends, secondary trends, how you interpret uh, a, a price and volume, uh, 
uh, to look for a potential trade, to help you stay in a trade and to help you exit from a trade. But as I said, those of you who haven't invested in the program, we will at least give you a taster of what we, you know, of, of what this very powerful methodology can do for your own trading. And the beauty about Wyckoff and volume price analysis, it is a base methodology. You can then apply, you know, other tactics that perhaps you are, that you are more familiar with. You, you could put your moving averages on there. You can put your stochastics. You can put your you know, Fibonacci's, whatever you want. It's not, it's not, it's this way or, or the highway. But what it does, it gives you a, a deep understanding of what the price action is doing and whether the what you're seeing on the chart is actually a genuine price move. If it's a genuine price move, we know it's going to go, it's going to carry on and, you know, we're happy and it relaxes us and we can be confident that, uh, you know, that, that the decision that we've taken to enter a trade is, you know, it's going to take away the stress that is an inevitable part of trading and there is nothing stress-free about trading there is nothing certain about about trading um but it what it does it you know it takes away if you like the raw edges around that uncertainty and stress you still have to manage the stress because you know when you put money on the line it is stressful uh but at, at least with this methodology, you will have a clear uh, narrative of what is what is happening, but more importantly, what is happening next. Now, that's what I've got to say. I will do some um, I will do some, uh, some schematics to perhaps uh, illustrate those very very quickly. Save me um, explaining it in in detail for the next time. This is a, a little series of webinars we put together. We're back again on Tuesday for uh, forex and Thursday again. Then it's Easter, and then we will come back the week after. As I said earlier, um, part and parcel of what we've done with the indicators, we've actually developed some very specific indicators for the Forex market. The Forex market is despite being touted the easiest market to trade it's easy in the sense that it's very easy access plenty of liquidity you don't need a lot of money to start a lot hundreds of brokers out there who will offer you a free platform which is the mt4 mt5 platform if you want to go to ninja you've got to pay for the platform it is a very easy access market but in terms of trading i can assure you it is uh, it is complex it's not complicated and uh, a lot of uh, traders who enter this market think that the easy also applies to the trading. I wish it were, but it isn't. But what so what we've done is with the indicators that we've developed, we start with our uh, currency strength indicator, which tells us what the individual currencies are doing. Is there, is, where is the flow of the money? Is it flowing into uh, the, the pound? Is it flowing? Where are the strongest flows? And by using them in multiple time frames, we can then get a sense very, very quickly of what the picture is on a daily chart. I've got the daily, I've got the hourly. Um, the currency strength is uh, separates all the currencies into the individual currencies. So this is the magenta line, which is the Japanese yen. We can see on the daily it's been falling and it's been falling because market sentiment has improved. The other thing you have to remember about the, uh, the forex market is individual currencies, uh, they have a role within the market. So the Japanese yen is both a safe haven currency and it's a currency of risks. So when um, uh, markets are, um, traders and investors are buying riskier assets such as equities, the Japanese yen will fall. Given that we've had two of the strongest up days for equities and indices, it's no surprise to see that the Japanese yen has been falling on the daily chart. Now, things don't fall in a straight line. In the faster time frames, we have seen some uh, trades to, that um, are completely contrary to that, where the you know some fear has come into the market, um, whereas the Aussie yen has been moving up very nicely. As we see the Aussie, the blue, uh, some nice moves in the Aussie yen, a lot of buying coming into the Aussie yen as sentiment has improved. Um, down in the faster time frames, there's been a pullback, there's been a tradable correction in that pair because the sentiment has shifted. Sentiment is very fragile at the moment. We're going to have some good days, then we're going to have some you know, days when the markets are going to be rocked uh, you know, quite strongly. Nobody really knows is the, is the bottom in for uh, this recent sell-off. We'd have to go and look at the charts, look at VPA, and you know, let's see what the charts tell us. But as forex traders, if we know 
that the uh, uh, yen is, uh, is is correlated with sentiment that already makes you know helps to make sense of what is going on on the chart. I use the hourly. Now that's the individual in, uh, currencies. We've then developed the currency matrix, which then ranks the pairs. So, for example, if we if I take out if I highlight on the hourly chart the yen pairs, well, where are they at the moment? Well, they're pretty much they're a little bit all over the place. So, which tells me that uh, maybe sentiment is not strongly in one direction or the other. It, it kind of reflects this little this kind of um, uncertainty that's out there. Markets would really like to find a base. Everybody's looking for good news. The best news in the world is that would be that this pandemic is under control. Uh, the death toll uh, reduces. The numbers are, you know, quite horrific that have been coming out of Italy, now Spain, and then obviously we, we've got the states. The good news that they will hold on to is if there's going to be some kind of medical breakthrough. Uh, we've had the most enormous rescue package in the states uh, just passed. I think passed by Senate, but it's got to go to an, another vote. It's not a stimulus package. Uh, it's a, a rescue package to help people through uh, this awful time that they're going through. We're going to get the unemployment numbers today from the states. They, it's going to be how horrible, uh, depending how horrible they are going to be. Um, we've had initial reports out of Singapore to give us an idea of how badly um, ec economies are going to be uh, impacted by this uh, by this virus that's come in at minus minus 10 percent i think there's going to be some terrible terrible fundamental numbers coming through in the next uh, few weeks and months and you know the markets and our life we're going to have to navigate our way through that uh, just on a, on another side issue i was just um from all the um uh, from my bloomberg um uh, terminal it was basically there's been a huge demand in physical physical gold which is really interesting i think the headline said the rich are all you know piling into physical gold and there's a shortage of things like canadian maple leaves uh, chinese pandas uh, because the um, uh, the refineries are certainly in switzerland are all closed so that kind of tells you what's going on underneath right for us traders at the at the sharp end and at the uh, faster in you know in the faster time frames this is where most of us spend our our lives as it were what's actually been going on well i've been looking at the euro aussie uh, it's really interesting pair for all all sorts of reasons which i will i'll bring my charts up and i'll, I'll talk you through as i said of the um uh, how the three laws will you know apply to the multiple time frames that I had up I had up have had up uh, David has been looking at the buying in the pound there's been some very nice buying in the British pound this morning some some lovely trades so I'm going to pass over to him and just a reminder on the fundamental news the fundamental news now is everybody is going to is really going to see the damage that has been done to uh, the economies and um, you know, how, you know, what uh, the wreckage that is uh, that has been wrought by this uh, pandemic. So uh, what we've got today in terms of, of news is we've got the um, the BOE, the official bank, uh, the official meeting. Um, as you know, there was a, a, a dramatic cut by the BOE down to point, uh, 0.1. So we'll see what uh, what they say. These are the unemployment claims to uh, keep uh, keep an eye on um, uh, in in the states. And obviously we're coming to the end of the month end of the month. But so that's it. I'm just going to pass over to David, and then we'll come back to me with the Euro Aussie. And of course we're two minutes to the London Open, where all sorts of uh, shenanigans normally go uh, uh, go on and carry on. So if you um, always be aware, if you're in a trade and if you're thinking of taking a trade uh, before at this time, just before the London Open, you might want to sort of step back a bit and see what actually happens. It's, it's, this market is a 24-hour market, as it said, easy in, uh, easy in easy out but uh, not at certain times of the day and one of them is the start of the London Open.